Good day everybody, this is the Ecclesiarch here, back with some more Warp Forge, and today I'm going to be presenting a deck on Nemesaur Zandrek. So, I think Nemesaur actually got a shadow buff, you could say. <laughs> he got a buff and a shadow buff, let's say it like that. So, the buff for Nemesaur, the biggest one, would probably be the fact that they buffed the Ghost Ark again. And Ghost Ark usually really blends in really well with the whole Nemesaur tempo thing. They also buffed the Undying Legions. But on top of that, they buffed the Implacable Conqueror. Now, that is a big deal. And... It's coupled with the fact that the Ultramarines are no longer prevalent and they're not like uh, the faction that is spammed the most. Uh, you can actually play this guy now to great effect. And let me tell you what exactly my um, take on him is. So you play him on tempo, obviously, um, taking advantage of the fact that he can keep summoning Necron Warriors. Uh, so mostly we are going to have a very early game focused uh, build. We're going to have reanimation protocol just for necessary remnants when otherwise on resurrection is not available. Two Goss Immortals because it's a very nice early game unit, especially if you can cover it with frontline because that regeneration is nutty. We have the resurrection orb. This is a must for Nemesaur. You really can't go wrong with having this due to so how many remnants you're going to have. We do have the three energy package, the Tomb Blade, Technomancer, and Triad Praetorian. I don't think this needs any uh, explanation. I think almost all Necron builds include these three, except the Scarabs maybe, uh, because these, these are just so good. We're going to have the newly new and improved Undying Legions, because that's going to be very good to keep those remnants going. Uh, we're gonna have death marks because they have also been buffed and the ability to gain stealth really goes well with Nemesaur Tempo. So once again, a little buff for him. We're gonna have Psychomancers for stun and Scorpec Destroyers, obviously, because of that beautiful flank. We are gonna be using the Canoptech Reanimators. I'm not gonna be using the Chronomancer because I think Chronomancer really just clogs up your board a little too much. Uh, we are gonna have Double Doom Sight just because it's a very powerful, uh, a flank card one copy of implacable conqueror i don't think we need two i think one is more than enough to make your late game stuff cheap and also draws your card so that's great we are gonna have one scythe assault and one hex mark destroyer so you really don't have a lot of synergy with hex mark or like big necessity for scythe assault but currently scarab decks are becoming more and more popular and that kind of is ruining <laughs> uh, your whole thing, so you need to have at least some way of combating it, though it will it'll be still be very hard. You do, uh, you will have like double Ghost Arc because the Implacable is just gonna make it cheap, and it's very powerful even without that. Methodical Destruction as a hard removal tool, Triarch Stalker as a finisher, uh, which is really good. You could also use the Blades instead, but I think Triarch Stalker is just good. Plus, it has like a nice. Um, combo with implacable and a of course necessary role play vargar Oberon. i don't know if he's like that necessary but come on like how do you play zandrek without including vargar Oberon, man that that's just too that, that that's just saying um i'm ready to sacrifice the biggest uh cool factor just to win more games so let's get right in guys and let's see what we can do no it's not bad kind i kind of made it sound like it's bad but it's not it's not it's just that maybe there are some better options okay we have a nemesaur mirror and i have a beautiful hand which is great honestly i'm gonna keep it let's go for normal conditions because we really don't have any reason to want to get a stun or something so we just drop this and we go face, I guess. I think he's going to do the same thing. Yep. Literally no reason not to. Uh, we are going to now play the Goss Immortal. So if he doesn't have a way of dealing with Goss Immortal, he might be in some trouble. Don't forget, guys, that Nemesaur keeps the remnants that stay adjacent, so if he takes out the Gossam Mortal, it's not the end of the world. We can still do some stuff. Okay, so he didn't have anything too good there. Uh, that actually makes this very uh, good, because I can now do this. I can drop my Psychomancer, stun him, 
and attack with the Goss Immortal. So you need to attack the enemy Warlord with Goss Immortal every single turn because you do regenerate. And currently, I believe there is no three ranged attack Warlord that's per that permanently has three ranged attack unless they receive some sort of buff from other cards. So you will always regenerate whatever, whatever you lose. Okay, he plays a Scarab. Now I'm mad. And I'm going to make sure uh, that Scarab does not stay. How do I want to do that, though, is the question. Uh, I could just score pack it, honestly, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Or I could play another Gloss Immortal into... Hmm. Know what I'm thinking? That's what I'm going to do. It's going to lose me a little bit of uh, tempo. Not, not a little bit of tempo. It's going to lose me a little bit of damage, but I think that's okay. Also, I don't think that Scarab is necessary on Zandrek. I think it's a waste. He really doesn't need it. Okay, there's the Scythe Assault, first one. And unfortunately for him, that was a pretty shitty Scythe Assault. And also, double unfortunately for him... I am going to play my reanimator and I'm going to bring this back a hundred percent. I'm gonna go face as well with this. Don't really don't really want it to mm, get destroyed, but you know, it's just one HP. So probably is where very easily taken care of anyway. So the reanimator is going to provide us with additional uh, reanimations, which is really good. Okay, Tomb Blade. Uh, okay, that sacrifices the Tomb Blade, and he surrenders. Okay, there we go. Uh, a big, big reason why we won once again was uh, the fact that we went first. Uh, I do know that a lot of people mention how good it is to go second in Warp Forge because of the defense cards and stuff, but... I think in a lot of cases, still going first is a huge advantage because you have a tempo advantage and having a tempo advantage in this kind of game is crazy. Once again, pretty good hand, I would say, because we have um, we have something for every turn. And I'm going to play Raging Storm here because uh, Necrons really don't get card draw. And since I'm playing tempo and I'm trying to push uh, aggro as much as I can, I do want to ooh, and I do need to use something like that. Just to get more cards so that I don't run out of steam. Though the negative side of that is that I might have given uh, Erika a chance to get mm, a chance to get the relics of Saint Catherine. Like I heightened the chances of her having that since she starts with one more card. But once again, we don't care. If we can spam the board enough. We good. She does have that Fury of the Righteous, which is going to help her deal with the Remnants. Unfortunately, we don't have a strong 3-drop. Never mind. We have a strong 3-drop. So, if now, if she drops an Arco Flagellant, she can take it out. Otherwise, I think she can't. By the way, Arco Flagellant, the stakes on Arco Flagellant are actually going up, because... There's a lot of spam through Nemesaur as well as Scarabs. And Tau are still popular. So yeah, you might actually want to include Arcoflagellants on all sisters decks. I, I currently am not doing it. I only have it on Morven Val, but based on how the situation changes, I might actually I, I might actually change my mind about it. Oh boy. That's not too good. Okay, now we're fine. And let's stun her. Too bad that we are unable to stop her from generating. By the way, uh, that's why exactly why I mentioned that the card, uh, this one, Death Cult Assassin is underrated. We did take it out, but it still dealt 4 damage. And it has 5 health, so it also stopped me from... Well, with Erika, it has 5 health, so... It also stopped me from stopping her prayer. So, in a way, it's not too bad. Of course, the zero range attack still sucks, but... I mean, 
That card is much better than it used to be. Okay, there is the relic. Uh, understandable, good sir. Understandable. Let me now do this because I can't really slow down in here. I'll need to push this very, very hard because now she has her um, faith to six. And two more faith already means that she can wipe the whole board. And unless I get a resurrection orb, it becomes difficult. So I need to push right now. I need to deal as much damage as I can. And sisters don't really have that many ways of clearing the board unless it's more than Val. Or unless she's a different type and plays Spirit of the Martyr or so on. But I, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Arco Flagellant now? Okay. Makes sense because he wants to destroy the whole um, remnant thing, but I don't think it helps really, does it? Yeah, it doesn't. So what we do is we go face real quick and we also drop the reanimator, bring this back. And now I think she loses. Now, I do think she loses, but she could have invulnerability. Let's not forget that sisters do have that. And it's available at three phase. And she's got six, so she could drag the game with it. That's her one saving grace here, I would say. It is going to cost her three energy, which means that she's not going to be doing much other than that plus shooting. So I can live with that. I think that's what he's thinking about. What, what do I do? Do I just invulnerable myself? Or maybe she just doesn't have a play. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Methodical destruction is going to come in handy because I do smell a mortifier. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, I get it. I get it. But I don't really think it helps anything, right? Yeah, it really doesn't. Because I can just keep bringing everything back. She needs to wipe the board. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. I do have Technomancer as well, ready for action, so yeah. I'm thinking maybe go for one death mark instead of two, that's what I've been thinking about, but I don't know, I, I mean death mark still thinks it still seems pretty good. There's the prayer to seven. Fury and invulnerability maybe. By the way, if she has invulnerability, probably she didn't win. Yeah, never mind. The holy radiance of the Emperor burns within me. Yeah, what I want did want to say is that if you do have invulnerability, just make sure that you don't put shield during invulnerability on, because the shield still, for some reason, uh, gets removed when you attack an invulnerable unit. So shield absorbs the attack before the invulnerability. So I know it's a little weird. Maybe it's not weird. Maybe it's just weird for me, but uh, that's how it functions. So you don't want to waste that shield when you are on low uh, HP. So yeah, unless unless you really desperately need that plus one faith. So, you know, that could also be true. Terror of Vardengast. Okay, that's going to be a little tricky. This will be a little bit tricky. I might have actually considered going um, the obelisk because he likes to spam the board. I think this is the rare case when I don't want to go face, I guess. Because his face damage is way better than mine. Dropping Goss Immortal is also pretty bad here. Why, though? 
Uh, yeah, let's take that out. Let's not leave any extra bodies there. Do I still go face, I wonder? I don't think so. I mean, every time he attacks a remnant, I take less than... Oh my... Fucking hell, man. Okay, uh, let's now drop a death mark. I believe a death mark is going to be perfect here. Because it's going to help us deal with that shit. Also, dealing a lot of damage to his face, which is a big deal. Okay, Neuroloid. Hardened Biology, oh my god. We can hate Hardened Biology, but what can we do? Oh! oh fucking hell! Okay, bro, at least I hope that you don't drop a friggin' Bloodthirst on me as well this turn. Don't forget, he doesn't get unstoppable. He can't fly over uh, Vanguard, so if I can take back control of the board. Hmm. I can't be serious. Yeah, as I was saying, if I can't take control of the board, it's gonna be crazy. And I can't take it out, can I? Unfortunately, I cannot, but I can do this, which is great. And I guess I, um, I do this. Deal some extra damage to this, because it doesn't regenerate at all. So, most probably he wants to hit this with the Warlord, so I think that's where it's gonna go. Mm-hmm. Understandable. Now then, we got some interesting things we could do here. But I think... Three, that's one, one. I think this is the absolute priority, though. So let's do this. Then we'll drop this. Uh-huh. And we just pass. So, the Divination is also going to mm, allow you uh, the cost reduction on the next turn, so that's still pretty good. We still have the Scorpac Corpse here, which is nice. Mm-hmm, there's the Neurogaunt. Ah, he makes... he goes wide. Well, I mean, that makes a whole lot of sense, to be honest. However... We can deal with that, no problem. Now... He needs another Rapacious Hunger, else this is going to go very south for him. But I think even if he plays Rapacious Hunger, now he loses because I can just generate an ending amount of frontline through the Ghost Arc. And Tyranids really don't have that many ways of just directly targeting the removal. Yeah, there you go, GG. Holy shit, that beginning though got me very frustrated. Alright, alright, that's 3-0 for us, boys. Let's continue. Let's see what else we can do. We also increased our Necron Peak rank, which is great. And there is eye for an eye, basically, because now we're facing another... Um, another spammer, basically. The question is, do I want normal conditions on this one, or do I want the Eclipse? Because I do have Methodical Destruction, but I think Eclipse is better. So let's see who spams the board better. Let's see, let's see. This is honestly all about who gets the control of the board first. The one who fails to do it kind of loses this matchup, so it's gonna be interesting. The only good side, um, the not only, but the biggest good side for us is that uh, we can take out his stuff 
pretty much for free. While he has to attack these to actually, you know, get the value. We got Implacable Conqueror in our hand. That's perfect. That's going to give us a huge boost. Ooh, Vespid Astingwing. Yikes. Okay. What you thinking about? I think I know what he's thinking about. He probably has Tidewall Gunport, and he's thinking whether or not to... Yes, and he should, and that's an absolutely correct move, because you never leave the Tomb Blade active, because if you do leave it, you kind of end up regretting it. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, do you see what I mean? You really end up regretting uh, playing Tomb World. So, yeah. Not to not not Tomb World. Sorry, leaving the Tomb Blade, because uh, then somebody can resurrect it and just keep chaining it, and it's crazy. So he did a very smart play there. Now probably we're gonna be playing Implacable Conqueror. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're now one hundred percent playing the Implacable Conqueror, mostly because he chose to use an AOE here instead of dropping anything. So that gives me a chance to actually play a slow turn. Because, yeah, Implacable is a pretty slow turn. But, as you can see, we got some good stuff. So, Goss Immortal for one. That's gonna be great. Especially considering we have two big flankers to just deal with whatever he plays there. No, he plays Savior Protocols. He also plays slow. I don't know if... Um... I don't know if that's too good, but sure. Oh, we also get a Technomancer. That is nasty as hell. So, no need to drop these first. Let's not go face for one or two turns. Let's see how this turns out. Because if he does a huge turn swing, uh, we might need the HP to attack the units. Oh, okay. So, very, very slow turns by the Tau. And his one of his AoE is already wasted. So, interesting. Uh-huh, okay. I understand that move. Absolutely understandable. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Go on. More marker drones. Hmm. Well, this is a 100% what we need to do here. I think we also play the Doom Scythe, uh, but not with ranged melee. Then we do this. And I think we still play a Relentless March. The front line is just too good to pass. Ah, goes to our face. Not too good. That's going to help it stack it up. But nevertheless, still all right. Yeah, it's going to destroy the Scorpech. But he needs to make sure the Remnant is also gone. Oh, don't make a stealth throne, please. Uh, don't make a stealth throne, please. Have mercy. Have mercy. Good Tau, sir. Please don't make a stealth throne. Oh, what the heck. Yikes. Mm -hmm, okay. I'm thinking a crazy turn, and I, I think it's not too bad. I could do it like this and hope that the camouflage gets removed, but that way I think we kind of... That's one... Hmm. Okay, one needs to go. That's like no... Not even a question. But I think this is how we do the second one. And I guess we just drop this. That's gonna be ugly. Ah. That hurt. That honestly hurt. Yeah, 
Yikes, yikes, yikes. Okay, sure, Scorpec gets destroyed. That's probably how it should be. Okay, that trades. So what's next? There's two reanimators on the board. Which one do you want to get rid of? Probably you want to get rid of this because it's... Uh... Oh, really? Long strike? That's a very weird choice, honestly. And why attack with your... Okay, never mind. As you wish, man. I won't judge. But I think it's kind of bad. Hmm. There's for sure only one thing we can do about this. And that is this. Get that out, out of the way as well. I'm kind of surprised he decided to long strike it. It's kind of weird. Sir, this might actually go south for us now. This might actually go south for us. These things are these things are making it hard for us, honestly. I mean, if we can roll a scythe assault, it could still go pretty well. Okay, he also did the stealth. No, it's a loss. As I said, the one who takes control of the board is going to win this matchup. And with double uh, support turret, it became almost impossible for us to deal with. And I think I also made a mistake by not... Uh, by using the camouflage. I think I should not have used the camouflage, actually. It kind of worked against me in the end, so yeah. Uh, this is not bad. Let's keep it. Divination of men here. Let's use divination of men here still. So that the Technomancer can be played earlier. Ooh, that's a correct thing with Swarm Lord. So whenever you're playing something aggro against this guy, you do want to use your Solar Storm because... Yeah, because not only does extra damage, but on top of that, it's going to help you deal with remnants, which is a very big deal. Now, Goss Immortal is not as good when you go second, because he can now play something. Oh, okay, well, lucky for me, he didn't. I might actually choose to do this here. Hmm. Darken skies. So I think there's a lot of scarabs going around, else there's no way somebody would be using that, I think. I think I still drop the Relentless March. Could be good to keep the reduction, but I think we should still play it. Frontline against the Swarm Lord is just way too valuable. There's also a Rapacious Hunger coming next turn, probably. Oh, shit. Never mind the Rapacious Hunger. There's that thing coming. If he has Rapacious Hunger plus that, it's a very disgusting clear. Oh, God. 
But um, it's not that terrible. It's not that terrible, I guess. Depending on how smart he's gonna be about this. And he was smart. Da, da, da. You know what? I hate scarabs. You know what? I why I hate scarabs? Because the scarabs are the reason people are running Darkening Skies plus Rapacious Hunger. <laughs> They're ruining my game even when I'm not playing against them. Pretty good deck though. I have to I have to admit this guy's adapting really well to what's going on currently in the game and a lot not a lot of good things are going on in terms of uh, in terms of why he's doing that okay do i just stun this is the question i think i do let's see if that was greedy This smells like an anti-scarab anti deck, what he's running. That's what I meant. That means the guy has been facing a lot of them. Which, of course, is not too good. Ooh, enhanced organism. That is nasty stuff right there. Okay, hold it. We can deal with it. Though it's gonna be a little bit ugly. So we do this. We do this. We do this. And we do this. And why not do this, right? There's literally no reason not to do that. Also no reason not to do this. There's the Lictor. Is that going to be hardened biology is the question. Augmented ferocity. Okay, so maybe, maybe he just did that for the healing, I guess. I think he did it in the wrong order, though. I'm just a little unsure if he really needed to do that. So how about we do it like this? We do this. Yep. I mean, he could still kill us with Bloodthirst, but... Eh. If he has Bloodthirst, it's a death anyway, so... Yeah. Toxic Entanglement, okay. I think my Scythe Assault is about to be very useful. That's good targeting, I would say. Uh, that needed to go, for sure. From his point of view. But I think that's gonna be it. Yeah. He played a pretty interesting deck. Uh, I, I gotta admit, I've never seen Darkened Skies being used, but as I said, if he's facing a lot of Scarabs, he might actually consider doing something like that. Hive Guard? Okay, now, now I'm... 
Now I'm convinced there's something something wrong here. <laughs> now I'm convinced there's something wrong here. There's no way we got a hype guard being played. Hey, GG. Because Hive Guard, like, there's no way to, uh, no reason to play that over the Tyrant, which is cheaper and better. Let's see what I get from my Gajillion Sister booster because I'm trying to get to the 40, and for now, still have a long way to go. Not too bad. Not too bad, actually. Did I get any duplicates? Let's see, I, I need those duplicates. Actually, nope. Nothing yet, nothing yet, nothing yet. So that would be... How many games did we play, actually? Let me just uh, double check it. How many was that? Okay, four to one, not bad. Let's continue. Orc. Now look at this. Orcs are not that bad. Oh no, shit. Not the Vargard in my hand. Uh -huh. You get the Dust Storm. Uh, orcs are not that bad, to be fair. Because, especially Gaskull, because since you're playing a spam deck, you could potentially outspam them. And you need to play aggro as well, because there's no other way you're playing that. They, however, can put you down if they manage to control the board well enough, which orcs are pretty good at. It, the good part is just that you don't really care about his armor because you can chip at him with your hordes and hordes of Necron warriors. Okay, what's what's he thinking? Does, is he thinking about getting Grots out or what? He's either playing a Grot, or he's playing a double Grot, or he's playing a Reduction, or he's just not playing anything. Okay. See if I mind. More Grots. Well, it's a positive trade for me. That's the good part. What, what what defense card does he have that he's thinking so much about using it? I wonder. Or is he playing... The only thing that comes to my mind is that maybe this guy is playing Unbridled Carnage and he's thinking of keeping those... Gor um, like, keeping those Grots for that. There's no other way I get... Because you can use the... Or maybe he just doesn't want me to see that he has vehicle reduction. But I, I think that's kind of obvious anyway, so... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, there it is. Okay. Plays the squig buggy. Some nasty stuff. Uh, right. We attack. The dust storm... Killed it, really. And he took a zero from it. Oh, okay, never mind. We can we can do something. Did the dust storm just ruin it for me? Yikes. I kind of got punished for that dust storm, but I think it's fine because sometimes that can mess up his choice as well about remnants and so on. Okay, that's actually pretty good. That, I would say, is actually not bad at all.
The only unfortunate part about this is that I can't attack with my Warlord anymore because I'm going to take 2 for 1 and my health is already low, so that's not going to work. See if he has another Squig Buggy on him. A Rucka Truck Squig Buggy. Why did I have to jinx it? Oh... Did I, did I, did I just see that happen? Yes, I saw that happen. It's exactly as I said, it can also benefit me. Let's get of the, get rid of the remnant for that. Are you kidding me for Christ's sake? Sheesh. Uh, stupid orc. Okay, let's see what he got next. Greatest war boss. And the big Krumpus. I like big Krumpus, it's a pretty cool card. Uh, yeah, we do this. We do this. Smash into him and pass. I think this is a potential will of Gork. Come on, will of Gork it, man. Will of Gork me, buddy. Good. I'm genuinely happy he did that. Oh, Will of Gork also destroys remnants. That's something I did not know, actually. But either way... Now I can safely play my Ghost Ark. And if he still wants to Will of Gork, then I'll play another Ghost Ark. Because why the hell not? Okay, he can actually do it with no mocking about, I think, now. Nope. So much for that. Well, I guess the hex mark's gonna do. Okay. Now you have to guild Will of Gork. <laughs> Will of Gork or Rock Invasion. There's like two ways you can deal with this. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. That doesn't look too good. Does that look good, guys? That's not good. Alright, we gotta be careful about that one, so... Yeah. This is going to bring it down to 5. So we still really can't kill it. Then this is how we do it. We just keep the high front line going. High amount of front line as well as Oberon. So that he can't really attack the Warlord. 
props for playing a very interesting card though. It's a pretty cool card. I think this is gonna be a Will of Gork. The Will of the Boys. Smells like Will of Gork. You probably never want to destroy this with Will, but... Oh, okay, okay. Are you also playing on Bridal Carnage? That would, that would make no sense, though. Would it, guys? Would it make sense for him to be playing that? With that kind of build? But that makes no sense. Like, for real, that makes no sense. Uh-oh. Okay, wait. Reanimate this. For starters. Uh, use this. Then use this. Then do this. Then do that, I guess. And... Um And what? Still deal damage. It's really annoying how your remnants can clog you up like that, but I mean it's a it's a balancing factor, I guess, so can't complain much about that. Plays the greatest war boss. Ooh, we got shielded remnants now. Wrong move. Wrong move. Absolutely wrong move. Two, one, four. Not enough yet. That's how we want to do that. Don't we have any more tactics? No, we don't. Oh, well, in that case, we just go face. Oh, wait, it's a... For some reason, I... Oh my god, for some reason, I thought he had two armor on. Jesus. <laughs> How did I miscalculate that lethal? That's stupid. Okay, well, GG anyway. Orcs are a tricky matchup for sure, so... Yeah, well played. <clears throat> now, look at this. We got the Sisters of a Battle. And Sisters of Battle is, uh, once again, a bit tricky. And we're going to play the Obelisk here. I think you guys can guess why I'm playing the Obelisk. It's not hard, because I need to take out Junith uh, 3 damage thingy as soon as possible. 3 HP thingy, sorry. What? Um... What? <laughs> what? Okay, never mind. I guess he just didn't want to play against Zandrek because it's pretty oppressive. I guess. Oh, okay. We got Grok. And Grok is currently, as I know, on top of the food chain. Is that Spac Marine? Nope, it's Half Orcus. 
All right, boys, I think this is going to be the last game. So let's see how we uh, perform as Nemesaur. Grok is trickier than Gaskol. Grok is trickier because, uh, for the most part, he's getting a lot of cards. And that means um, he's rarely going to run out of resources to deal with your crap. He draws more cards. Uh, I'm not sure if Goss. Oh no. Yeah, Goss Immortal definitely does not get played here. But Makari needs to fuck off. Boss Immortal not too good because I could see him playing the Warbiker there. But I could still try though. If he's thinking so much, then there's a choice that he can make here, I guess. I guess he has some kind of big choice. So what could it be? Is he thinking of whether or not to Warbiker this? Or to keep the Warbiker? That's the only thing that comes to my mind. Hmm. That's actually genuinely interesting. Let's see what he has in mind. Very, very interesting move. I just don't get why, though. Maybe she just didn't have any other plays. Or maybe he maybe just armor up this turn. Uh, I'm kind of confused. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of confused here. I think the reason why he might have done that, the only reason that comes to my mind, is he didn't have anything else to play, I guess. Mm-hmm. Grizzled Scarboy it is. And... Do you attack it? Hmm. He attacks that one. That's smart, actually. We're actually gonna pray for some ghost arcs here because without ghost arcs it's hard to deal with all the will of gork and board control shenanigans that the orcs possess. His armor did come very early, so that might be a problem. There's the squig buggy. Probably takes out the remnant. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we'll we'll try this first. Uh. Okay. All right, that's one squeak buggy gone. We did get our remnant protection. That's going to be very good against palm squigs. So it just doesn't clear my whole board when played. Hit. 
It's the orc knob. Okay, Makari, I guess. And the bomb squig. Ooh. That's some nasty stuff right there, actually. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. I, I get it. I get it. For a moment there, I couldn't get what happened. Hmm. I think this is how we do it, right? Yep. I think that's how we do it. See what else he's got to offer. That's not too good. Art as nails? What? That's a little weird. Is he playing an aggro one there? And I don't know that he's playing an aggro one. Okay. Let's keep trying. Let's keep trying. The Red Wall. Okay. That's gonna need another hit. Yep. Makari goes to my face. That makes sense. Mm hmm. Do, 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 do. All right, let's keep going. He draws another troop. That's a snaz wagon. And uses proper killy, okay. I think that actually makes a lot of sense. So he just doesn't want to give me any amount of board control, which is understandable, to be honest. As I'm playing Necrons and, you know, that can get very ugly. Very quickly. Then he wants to take out the Tomb Blade. And 
And okay, that's actually pretty good. So Makari is out of the scene for now. And we got reanimate here, which is actually pretty nice. Okay, not the best uh, option, but I guess it can work. Take 4 damage. And blow up the sna snazzy wagon. Maybe that was a shit score pack placement, but I'm kind of sure he might be willing here. Nope, squig buggy. Yeah, that was a shitty score pack placement. Sucks to be me. And there's the squig. Makari. Oh, what the hell, mate? What's with all the squigs? The heck, man? What's with the squigs, seriously? But once again, it might make sense because Scarabs are currently running the show, so that could be... That could make sense that people are taking in squigs now. So double artist nails and double squig. Still hasn't used any of his hard removal here. Okay, let's wait. The red wall. And another proper kill. Okay, he's got a pretty interesting deck. I have to admit, he's got a pretty interesting deck. It's like a aggro mixed with control lish. Oh, there's the resurrection orb, but uh, too little, too late. Pretty, pretty interesting deck with the guy. Well done. Oh boy, but once again, I hate scarabs. I think people are taking in those squ squigs and shit because of that. Let's give him a GG. And let's move on to the next game. Let's play one more. Let's play one more. So, Anvir Keltok. Now, Anvir Keltok is a big bad... Uh, big baddie right now, because... Of his ability, but um, normal conditions. I play Goss Immortal, he takes it out anyway, so maybe. Yep, now that I have reanimation protocol, it could be okay. I'm just unsure if I want to give Eldar more starting energy because I mostly start with shit like uh, Necron Warriors, so giving him more energy is never a good idea. See what I mean? Exactly. My point exactly. A 
Okay. Okay then, friend. Okay. Let's do that. Do I resurrect that? I still think we do. Just keep the tempo going. Probably replace that, right? Or not. The Path of the Seer. Now, he might already have his AoE in his hand. But I don't think I'm going to get a much better chance to do this. I know that he might already just Eldritch it, but... I mean, there's probably not going to be a better moment for it. So, you know, at, le at least it's going to waste his spirit stones and energy. So that works for me. Hmm. Surround them. Strangle them like the serpent. Interesting. So he didn't have it after all. Shit placement again. I'm still actually getting used to the fact that with Nemesaur now it matters where you actually place your units. I'm now, as I play, I'm thinking like if you were to replace Bargard Oberon, you would probably drop a second Triarch Stalker in it because it would really help you. Uh, push your ag ag uh, aggro, but I think just not playing Vargard Oberon kind of sucks, man. Come on. It's Vargard Oberon. It's his personal bodyguard. Like, why would you not play it? Them. Them. There's no reason not to. I have so the craft world may never fall. That's a bit nasty. That's gonna be three, and that's gonna be like this. Then we drop another one. Like this. And let's take out the flyer, because it's a flyer. <laughs> Both have sniper, but the flying sniper is a bigger priority, I think. Plus, this way he doesn't get a spirit stone because with snipe he has to freely take the kill. Ooh. Interesting. Honestly speaking, this is not when. What the heck are you doing? Oh, sorry. My bad. You're doing it as you're supposed to be doing it. Okay, you know what, brother? I'm gonna do it like this. Mostly because I want the extra spirit stone gone. We never want them to get spirit stones. Pew, pew, pew. When my comes, it comes. Hmm, I kind of expected the hemlock, to be honest. Well, let's see if you have the juice to deal with all of this, though. Ugh. That's not the best way to start. Oh, 
Oh, that doesn't scare me at all. In fact, I think you lose. In fact, I think he loses. GG. GG. Okay, that was that was a pretty uh, top one as well. Kel talk is pretty scary, I would say, for everybody currently. And yeah, I think we actually increased our Necron peak rank, which is great. What's the highest Necron? I think it's Putis, right? Uh, yeah, three through point three. I mean, we could get up there. We could get up there. We're not too far away, boys. We could farm some more. Necron. Uh, anyway, guys, this is my take on Nemesaur. Uh, I think currently we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wins and two defeats. Technically, six wins because Junus just decided to surrender. Um, six wins, two defeats. Not bad for sure. Uh, but if you count the Junus, then it's seven wins and two defeats. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. And I do have the Terror of Warden Gods coming as well as a updated Junith deck, a Tau deck, some tier lists, there's a lot of things coming, so stay tuned. Ecclesiarch out.